What is the most powerful word that you will say in your business? If you get this wrong, you lose your business because your business will go to heck in a handbasket. <laughs> I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Now this question was inspired by somebody who called in to the show and they asked me this question. Hi, Angela. I've been cleaning professionally for about a month now, but I've been cleaning all my life now. When is it too much that the client is asking for? Their house is infested with roaches. I don't want to do it. Baseboards are black when they're supposed to be blue. When is it too much that they're asking for? Because I need to know. Thank you. All right. When do you walk away from a job? And the answer is the minute that you sense you're not right for the job. The most powerful word that you will ever use in the course of your business is no. N-O, no. No, I'm not right for the job. And you can say it with confidence. If you can't say it with confidence, get in front of a mirror and practice it over and over and over and over again until you can look a customer in the eye and say, no, I am not the right person for that job, but I know who is. And this is where alignments come in. It is networking. It is where we align ourselves with other businesses that have the services we ourselves do not provide. And it's important to know what you don't sell and why. Okay. So you go to a customer's house and they say, well, there's a little spot on my floor. Can you clean up the spot on my floor? And then maybe just kind of like shampoo the carpet while you're at it. Well, the answer is no, no, we don't clean carpets. And then you need to know why. I'm a house cleaning business and I carry a vacuum in my car. I do not carry a great big van with all those hoses and water and chemicals and big ginormous fans and extracting machines and all that stuff. And so the reason we say no is this, you have to ask yourself the question, how much would this job get me? And so if the customer is willing to pay an extra hundred dollars for you to get the stains out of our carpet and, you know, shampoo the carpets while you're at it, is it worth it to you to put your reputation on the line in case you screw up the carpets and you have to replace the carpets? The answer to that is no. And then you start thinking, well, wait a second. If customers are asking me for my carpet cleaning services, how much does that cost to get in the carpet cleaning business? Well, then you have to look at the opportunity cost. How much is it going to cost me for the training? Am I smart enough to do it? Yes, I am. Am I physically capable? Yes, I am. Could I learn it as a skill? Yes, I could. Is it a good business move? Mm, maybe. What's it going to cost? Well, I need training. I need one of those vans. I need all the hoses and the chemicals. I need the big ginormous fans that dry the carpets after you've extracted them with extracting machines. That's 50 grand right there just for me to get a hundred dollar job. Let's see, 50 grand, a hundred dollars. There's no payoff right now. How many jobs do I need in order to get the 50 grand back? And if I have a carpet cleaning business, what do I have to do to get the 50 grand back? And so the question is, does that include a new website? And is that new search engine optimization? And is that new marketing? And is that new uh, social media? And suddenly you're talking about hiring a team of people to do a whole bunch of other tasks for you. How much does that cost? And so you're talking about 50 grand for the supplies and the training. You're talking about probably another 50 grand per year for somebody else to do the other half of that business. So we're in a hundred grand. And now my question is what? Cause we have a customer that wants to pay us an extra hundred dollars. The answer is no, no, we don't do that. But I got a buddy of mine who does. Let me introduce you to my buddy who has a carpet cleaning business. He's been doing this for years. He knows it like the backside of his hand and he's insured and bonded for carpets right? That is a much, much, much better way to serve your customer than saying, well, you know, I, I don't want to say no. So I'm going to run down to the store and I'm going to get a little tiny machine and I'm going to buy $30 worth of chemicals. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to read the instruction manual and watch a YouTube video. And I'm going to try to like clean their carpets. Uh, no, that is not what we do, right? You need to know exactly what you do and what you do not do. Okay. A customer says, well, how much does it cost for you to wash my windows? Uh, let me check. I don't have a truck. I don't have a truck mount. I don't have two story ladders. I don't have extension ones. We do not clean windows, but I know somebody who does. Then you recommend them to your buddy who does clean windows. Now, the reason I say this and the reason it is so important is because as house cleaners, we get really sidetracked by the wisp of the quick buck. We want to serve our customers and we are people pleasers and we want to go in there and we want to give them what they asked for. But the answer is we are not qualified on all things, nor should we be. So when a customer calls and says, Hey, listen, I got this like mold on my ceiling, but it's a very small patch. Can you come clean the mold? 
I want to say yes. Yes, I can make your house shine. But the answer is no. You've got mold in the ceiling of your house. What we need is a mold remediation specialist that can come in and measure the moisture in the air. And if they find moisture and mold behind the walls of your home, and it often happens where there's like a dripping faucet or something, and then you get mold that's in the floorboards and the walls and the drywalls and the floors and the ceiling in the attic of your home, it just grows. Mold grows really, really fast. It's an organic compound and it just grows. It's going to take over the whole entire house. Okay. I, I'm not qualified to do that. We need to get somebody in here that can measure the moisture in the air and then they can blast, ice blast that out of the house. It's like a pressure washer, but with dry ice. I don't have those machines. I don't have those, that, that kind of training. I, I'm not equipped as a house cleaner. I'm, I'm fantastic with a mop and a, a vacuum, right? I can do that. But with the dry ice blasting, not my thing. And so when you stop and you realize, what is that going to cost me? Is that something we offer? Very quickly, you're going to determine in your business what you do not do. And that's really important to know. When a customer asks you, ah, wish I did and I don't. We don't do that. We don't offer that service, but I know someone who does. When a customer invites you into their home and they have roach infestation and they have black on their baseboards, I don't know what the black is. Is that mold? Is that cigarette tar? I don't know what that is. And so until we get a remediation specialist to come in who's actually qualified for this and they have hazmat suits and they're able to come in and not only knock out the, the pest situation, which sounds like a pest control service, there might also be a rodent infestation. And if you get into a house and you're like, whoa, this is way over my head, you need to be very kind and compassionate, but say those words. No, I'm sorry. This is not exactly what we do, but I know somebody who does. Would you mind if I gave you a recommendation of someone that would be a perfect fit for your house and they are trained to do what it is you need because I want to serve you in the best possible way and I'm not the right person for that. They will appreciate you more for coming up and just being honest with them than to go home and to try to figure out some really expensive price so you can price yourself out of the market. That's not helpful to them either. You gave them no recommendations and all you did give them was a really high price that made them think that having that service was unapproachable or unaffordable. And so my suggestion is learn to say no and get really comfortable saying no. During the COVID era, I have said no <laughs> to more projects than I've ever said probably in my entire life combined. They're just coming at me like from every angle and I got to say no. I want to so bad and no, not the right fit, not the right time, not the right service, not the right whatever. No, we, we don't do that. Wish we could, but we don't. However, I know somebody who, who can. So my suggestion to you is learn to say no and then learn to create alignments with other people in the industry and I say in the industry, they have the same customers you have. So that would be carpet cleaners and window washers. That would be pressure washing people and pest control people. This would be home organizers, people that do similar stuff to the same audiences, but it is not what you do. And then get really comfortable looking the customer in the eye and smiling as big as you can and say, yeah, you don't want me to do that. <laughs> All right. I hope that helps a little bit. If it does, give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, leave those in the links below. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.